In this video, I'll cover how to use Hyper Backup to backup files on a Synology NAS to a remote Synology NAS running Hyper Backup Vault, all while using TailScale set up with outbound connections. This video builds off of my previous video where I covered setting up TailScale outbound connections and use Synology's snapshot replication package to replicate snapshots to a remote Synology NAS for backups. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Since that video, setting up TailScale outbound connections has become a lot simpler, and I'll start off with setting up TailScale on both Synology NAS devices first. I'll do that by installing the TailScale package from the Package Center. Then I'll launch the TailScale package and log into my account. At this point, I'll follow these instructions provided by TailScale to enable outbound connections on my Synology NAS devices. I'll also leave a link to this TailScale knowledge base article in the description below. For some background, TailScale setup on a Synology NAS running DSM-7 only allows inbound connections to the NAS by default. But to use backup applications like Hyper Backup, TailScale will need permissions to create a TUN or TUN device to permit outbound connections. To set this up, I'll bring up Task Scheduler from the control panel, then click Create, select Triggered Task, then User Defined Script. From this Create Task window, under General, I'll give the task a name, select Root as the user that runs the task, Make sure that boot up is selected for the event that triggers the task, as well as make sure the task is enabled. From task settings, I'll paste in the following user-defined script, which I copied from the TailScale knowledge base article I mentioned earlier. I'll then click OK and OK again on this warning pop-up window to complete the setup. At this point, I'll reboot this Synology NAS and note that I followed the same task scheduler setup steps on the remote Synology NAS because it also requires TailScale outbound connections to be set up as well. After the Synology NAS is back online, I like to test to make sure that outbound connections is working. I'll do that by first enabling SSH from the terminal and SNMP control panel. I'll then SSH into the local Synology NAS and ping the TailScale IP address of the remote Synology NAS, which looks to be working fine. Now with TailScale outbound connections set up on both Synology NAS devices, we can start setting up Hyper Backup. On the local Synology NAS that already has a shared folder that I would like to backup, I'll install Hyper Backup from the Package Center. While on the remote Synology NAS, I'll install Hyper Backup Vault from the Package Center. This will allow the NAS to receive backups from other Synology NAS devices that run Hyper Backup. I'll also create a shared folder that I'd like to use as a destination for the backups. I'll do that by bringing up Control Panel, then Shared Folder, and create a shared folder that I'd like to use. Once both Synology NAS devices are set up, I'll bring up the local NAS and launch Hyper Backup from the main menu. I'll then select the Remote NAS Device option to start up the Backup Wizard. Then I'll switch over to the TailScale website and copy the IP address of the Remote Synology NAS running Hyper Backup Vault. Then back on the local Synology NAS, I'll paste in the IP address in the server name or IP address box. Click Login, which brings up the login window for the remote Synology NAS, and log into the NAS. In my case, I'm using an admin account to log in. Once the login is completed, I'm redirected to the local Synology NAS once again, and we can see that authentication was successful because the account I logged into shows up next to authentication. Now I'm able to select the shared folder on the remote Synology NAS that was set up earlier as a backup destination. And in my case, I'll change the directory name that will be created on the remote NAS to something more meaningful. 
From this data backup window, I'll select the local shared folder I'd like to backup. From this application backup window, I'm able to select applications that can be backed up, which I'll skip over for this video. I'm also able to configure specific backup settings from this window, including if I'd like to compress the backup data, schedule when backups will run, and integrity checks. I'll leave this as is for this video and just give the backup task a custom name. On this rotation settings window, I'm able to customize a backup rotation that is appropriate for my data, but again, I'll leave things as is for now and click done. At this point, the backup wizard finalizes the setup, and if everything was entered in properly, you'll be prompted to run a backup now, which I'll do in my case. Note that I did run into some issues with setting up Hyper Backup and got this error message listed here on screen. What I did to resolve the issue was reboot both Synology NAS devices and try again. Also, you may get this message listed here on screen. If you do, you'll need to remove the backup folder created on the remote Synology NAS, then you can try running through the Hyper Backup Backup Wizard once again. And if you want to give Synology's snapshot replication a try, check out this video listed here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work, check out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.